Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Automated Tools to Achieve Consistency, Reliability, and Efficiency for Plasmid and Protein Purification, Western Blotting, and Cell Isolation. This webinar is part of the seventh annual event in the Laboratory Automation Virtual Event Series. I am Morgan Sterling of LabRoots, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by GenScript. For more information about GenScript, go to www.genscript.com. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to remind you all that everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our live chat feature during the presentation. You can find the live chat located at the left of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you would like during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the ask a question box and click submit. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the help desk button located at the top of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. I now present today's speaker, Rupa Najjar, MBA, Head of Product Marketing, GenScript Product Division. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the presenter tab from the menu at the top left of your screen. Ruba, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you for the introduction. As mentioned, my name is Ruba, and I'm really excited to be presenting to you today. Thank you very much for joining me. So for today's webinar, I will be presenting to you various automated solutions developed by GenScript that will provide you with consistency, reliability, and efficiency. That way you can accelerate and streamline your various workflows. And with that said, I, um, before I dive in, I would like to briefly introduce you to GenScript. Um, GenScript is pretty well known as a gene synthesis company. Um, this is really the platform that was developed on when it was founded back in 2022. Uh, it was founded actually in Piscataway, New Jersey. And since then, it has grown significantly through uh, uh, either acquisitions or actual uh, development internally. We celebrated our 20th last year, and we're really excited to be actually also be presenting the Emma Quattro as part of the 20th anniversary. For today, I'm going to be taking you through a couple different workflow applications that are, the team has really developed and fine-tuned. The first one is going to be the plasmid purification. After that, I'll be talking about the protein and antibody purification solutions, uh, and then the protein electrophoresis in Western, and finally, the cell isolation. And of course, at the end, I'll have some time to take some questions. So for plasmid purification, um, of course, plasmids have been around for many, many years. Uh, they were actually really, they've been really instrumental in a lot of the molecular uh, biology workflows, as well as, of course, um, some of the most basic workflows that enables us to go into different applications. So, of course, there's different grades of plasmid, whether you're doing a standard research grade or you're doing industrial or preclinical, each one has its own requirements as well as its own throughput. So once you get into a higher up industrial or preclinical, you're typically working with quite a bit of large quantities of DNA. So with that comes, of course, um, different challenges, different um, uh, regulations. Uh, and hopefully what you'll see today is actually something that would fit your workflow. So of course, with plasmids being around for many, many years, um, there's been multiple methodologies that have been developed to actually um, lyse, lyse the actual E. coli cells and get that really pure plasmid. So one of the most golden or one of the most standardized methodologies, of course, is the ion exchange columns. Um, for today, I'm going to be showing you uh, actually the GenScript solution, which is based on the magnetic silica beads. So, of course, um, traditional plasmid purification starts off with um, growing your culture, going into um, centrifuging down your culture, and then resuspension lysis, and the multitude of uh, steps that are fairly labor intensive and really time consuming. 
And of course, that ends up getting worse and worse. Uh, the, the, what I'm talking about worse is, of course, labor intensity as, as well as uh, the time commitment that is needed for plasma purification uh, with larger quantities. Of course, when you're handling more uh, sample, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a different um, uh, workflow. So with that said, our team has developed what we named the Emma Quattro. This is a large, high throughput, completely automated solution that enables you to um, purify maxi prep uh, plasmids. So um, what you're seeing to the right hand side is actually uh, a small controller that can control up to four purification modules. And each single purification module that you're seeing um, a little bit to the left is actually independently controlled of one another. So each one can run up to six samples and each module can do um, a different program or a different protocol depending on your needs and it can be ran completely independently of one another. So if you have a lower throughput, it's not a problem. You can just simply um, use one module or of course, if you have higher throughput, you can grow and um, have additional modules as your needs grow. The other really wonderful thing about this solution is that it is a complete solution. It includes the pre-filled consumables as well as the verified protocols. So the instrument is actually loaded with the protocols for you. So that way you can uh, true, true, you know, actually take it out of the box and run it immediately. So it's a true out of the box solution, which is um, if anybody has really done any kind of automation really knows that this is a huge pain point when you have to really optimize and develop. So I'd like to take a couple moments to highlight the key features of the Emma Quattro. As I mentioned before, if you end up using a four module setup, you can technically run 24 samples at a time. Uh, the pipetting accuracy of this uh, instrument is pretty good. It's actually a CD of 3%. And the actual sample is really limited by the pellet range. So when you have your bacteria of pellet, one of the first steps is actually to centrifuge it down. And that wet bacterial pellet is what's gonna be loaded onto the Emma Quattro deck. And after that, it will be completely hands-off or automated. So between 0 0.3 to 1.5 grams of bacterial pellet is really the optimal range for the solution which is typically between 50 to 200 ml. It really varies depending on the plasmid being used, on the insert, of course, all the growth conditions, as well as a multitude of other factors. The runtime for the um, for the prep is gonna be approximately two hours to two and a half. It really depends on the protocol that you're running. And what you will end up with is actually transfection ready, pure plasmid, which of course is one of the top grade plasmids. So that means when you take the plasmid and you take it into your transfection assay, um, you will be seeing uh, excellent results. And the one uh, additional thing to mention is that the consumable kit is actually all inclusive. So that would mean everything you will need to basically run this instrument with the maxi prep is included, minus the ethanol. Of course, this is more of a shipment requirement. Um, I think most of the people that um, have worked in the laboratory setting know that there's a lot of shipping um, challenges with ethanol because of course it's an explosive. And lastly, uh, of course, is the user interface. So as I mentioned before, the programs are preloaded onto the instrument. So you, the user can theoretically take the instrument out of the box and run it immediately. However, if they choose to modify the protocol or modify any of the programs or build their own, it's not a problem. The interface is extremely user-friendly. So this is the consumable kit that I mentioned is all inclusive. So it includes your reagents, all of the buffers, uh, as well as the tubes that are needed to run the sample. Uh, it also includes the tips and the elution tube. And finally, it includes your waste container. What's really great about this as well is that it is actually really, really cost effective. It is about 20 to 30 percent less than the market average, which uh, is a huge benefit for using the Emma Quattro. This is the workflow. I'm not going to go into this for, um, of course, for the time because we're limited with time on this webinar. But really, what you're seeing here, everything in blue, 
uh, that's, that's uh, kind of has a blue rectangle around it. That's completely automated using the Emma Quattro. So basically the steps that are manual are outside of the blue line, which is centrifugation of your bacterial, col uh, bacterial culture. And then at the end of the purification, uh, your sample is going to be dispensed into a column filter, and that is technically an optional step. However, we certainly do not recommend that you skip that because it will get you to that really pure plasmid. And that step, um, uh, once the run is complete, the user will cap that tube and then centrifuge it down. So that is also a manual step. But of course, that is at the end of the run. So it's not really an intermediate step. So this particular slide, and I apologize, it's a little bit small, uh, but this particular slide is to show you the user interface. So as I mentioned before, the actual controller can control up to four modules. So the user doesn't necessarily need to have four modules plugged in. They can have one or up to four. And what you're seeing this in this particular example is that we have only one module plugged in, which is um, uh, the actual, um, uh, sorry, the blue, the blue line. And it gives you a wide variety of controls. Um, but this is really one of my favorite things about the solution is that, um, which I hope uh, the people on the call would really appreciate the benefit of that. Once you load your samples and you can actually, um, uh, you're gonna go ahead and scan the instrument deck and confirm whether or not you have loaded your um, consumables correctly. So what that means is that if you have any kind of um, um, user error or user uh, uploaded it incorrectly, you will be able to basically, um, using the scanning feature, detect that before you go ahead and start your run. So with that said, this has uh, really been designed to make the solution error, um, uh, error proof versus error prone, of course. So once you go ahead and confirm your deck is correctly loaded, so you can see here it says tips, it says reagent, and you can see the barcode of the reagent. Every, every reagent cartridge is actually barcoded. Uh, you have your action tube, your sample, as well as your waste. You can confirm that actually all six sets are actually loaded correctly. If you do see no, that's not a problem. You can run up to six samples. You don't have to run all six. So that will give you, again, an indication of whether or not the samples were loaded. And one of my other favorite things about this UI is also the fact that you can, anytime that you run your uh, program and you potentially want to check at what step it's on, you can walk up to the instrument and actually see in real time, what step of the process has been completed and what step of the process it is currently on and what it has yet to complete. So you can see here that everything in blue has been completed and the step that's blinking, the pre-clarification step, the light blue, uh, this is currently the step it's on and then what's left over is everything in gray. And it will also give you a countdown of when the complete run is estimated. So that way the user can walk away and then come back once the, um, the timeline has lapsed. Now I'm going to be showing you a little bit of performance data with the Emma Quattro. So the very first case study that I have is actually comparing two different uh, growth conditions. And you can see here, this for this particular case study, it's not just to show you the growth conditions, but it also is to show you the concentration of the final product, the uh, quality of the plasmid DNA as well as some of the other metrics that are typically measured. So you can see the first set of three samples, they were grown using LB culture media. And then the second set, four through six, were ran using TB. And really the big thing here, the big takeaway is that with LB, which is not a very rich media, you're gonna end up with um, fairly, uh, it's an okay uh, cult media, it's not, amazing, but that definitely was something that is more rich, like TB, terrific, terrific broth, you're going to end up with significantly more bacterial polyp, which of course translates into how much plasmid you will end up getting. So you can see in the concentration row for samples one through three, we obtained approximately 400 to 500 nanograms per microliter. However, for the cultures that were grown on, in t with TB medium, we obtain between 800 or a little bit more than uh, 800, so almost double. So that 
you know, that really speaks to the various conditions that impact your, um, your outcome for your plasmid. So of course, with that said, um, we definitely looked at other metrics to indicate what is the quality of the plasmid. For example, the OD to 60 to 80 to 60 to 30, as well as the endotoxin levels and the super cold ratio of the plasmid itself. All key factors to ensure that you have good plasmid and of course, eventually good transfection results. The second case study, what we ended up doing similar to the one before, we took a set of samples and we ran them side by side. For this particular one, the culture volume was about 150 ml. And you can see we obtained between 400 to 500 nanograms per microliter. Uh, and the sample was eluded in about 1.3 ml. To the right hand side, you can see that we took those plasmids and we transfected them. And side by side, we looked at the uh, uh, exactly uh, the same plasmids that were purified using a manual kit, uh, readily available manual kit, and we compared it side by side with the transfection efficiency of the MMA Quattro. So the idea here is to see do we have good expression using the MMA Quattro purified plasmid in comparison to the manually commercial kit available in the market. And you can see that we actually obtained equivalent performance. The next one um, is another case study where we did using, again, a um, uh, similar um, setup where we were comparing it to a manual commercially available kit in the market. And this was actually done by our service team. So Genscript is really well known for their service, um, for their plasmids that are provided as a service. Uh, and they are currently, uh, this particular run was done using a manual kit. So with that said, that is the positive control. And then of course we have the negative control, which is just a HEC293 uh, cell. And what we did here was a luciferase reporter gene. Um, and the idea here is to see how do we compare with, again, the manual solution. So the manual solution is the plot that is uh, in blue. And then we have two samples that were ran on the MA Quattro. Um, test one is in uh, green, and then test number two is in purple. And you can see for uh, obviously the brown, it's just a negative control, which is just the which is just the cell. So ultimately, the whole point of the study is to show again the transfection efficiency, and you can see that actually the transcript uh, um, solution, the automated solution that was done on the MMA Quattro, outperformed the manual kit. And then the last case study I have for you was uh, specific to P. Lenti uh, uh, plasmid. So I think um, probably anybody on the call might probably be already aware of this. So of course, for P. Lenti viruses, um, you're typically working with multiple constructs of plasmids. So with that said, uh, we did the purification of the MMA Quattro. And again, we did a control group with a manual kit. And what you can see on the upper uh, table, uh, we, this was done on, on purpose, basically. So what we did is we did the purification and we used an elution of 1.5 ml. However, for the control group, we did uh, a third of that. So we did the manual control group by 500 microliters. And you can see the concentration for the MMA Quattro is about 300 nanograms. And the concentration for the manual control is basically one mg per ml, which again is three times. Then we took those uh, purified plasmids, both from the Emma Quattro as well as the control, and we transfected it um, to show um, uh, the success uh, of the, uh, or the performance, of course, those are, those are tied to one another, of the plasmid. And you can see that we did a, a P24 lenti titer. Uh, and you can see to the right-hand side what, it, what I have basically boxed in red is the uh, average titer for the control group as well as the MMA Quattro group. So for the control group, the two different samples that were ran side by side, they averaged about 50 uh, for the titer and then same thing for the MMA Quattro. So the idea here is even though our sample purposefully was diluted by uh, one third to the manual kit, the plasmid was very, very pure that the transfection was efficient an equivalent in performance to a manually uh, performed run that was basically three times more concentrated. So again, very, uh, we did that on purpose to show the success or the quality of the plasmid that was purified using the Quattro. 
And now I have a quick uh, video that I'd like to show you. Um, it's only one minute, so I'll go ahead and hit play. And one thing before I hit play, I really want to highlight the key important things is that the setup is incredibly quick. It takes about five to 10 minutes. Um, the actual instrument is configured with the tubes that were really designed to enable really good mixing, really good incubation with the magnetic beads. Uh, and this is one of the big things that attributed to the success of this instrument and the good performance that I have shown you a minute ago. And with that, I'll go ahead and hit play. Okay, I hope that was informative. With that, I'm gonna to switch topics and now I'm gonna be talking about our protein and antibody purification solutions. So we have a very reliable and very efficient um, instrument that enables users to automate up to 12 samples at a time, either for protein or uh, antibody purification. Uh, what's really nice about it is that it's extremely quick, extremely efficient, and it automates the most tedious steps in any, any kind of protein or antibody purification, which of course is the washing and elution, especially when you're doing sequential elution. So this solution is also magnetic bead based. This is why it eliminates the need to centrifuge and filter. Uh, what you can do, especially if you're doing like a protein expression, you can actually throw in the beads with your sample and then incubate and then go ahead and load them onto this instrument. And um, basically, uh, you can just directly add the beads to the culture. So really nice, uh, really nice uh, methodology that's super straightforward. The nice thing about it as well is that it can run up to 12 samples at a time. So um, the actual um, the actual sample run is uh, is is done in a, a V-shaped conical 50 ml tube, so you can go as low as 2 ml or up to 50 ml. But in reality, you can actually, um, if you have um, a larger culture, you can technically uh, take your beads, put them in with the larger culture. Uh, actually, we have a magnetic wand that you can swirl. Um, the the wand into the culture and then transfer the beads into the 50 ml tube. So theoretically, you can definitely exceed that 50 ml uh, culture volume. It's just the capacity of the tube that is used onto this platform. Another wonderful part is that it actually takes less than an hour to run, which is phenomenal. And then the elution is can be as low as four, uh, 400 microliters. The user interface is really simple. I'm not going to show it here. Uh, but it is also similar to the MMA Quattro. You can technically program it to accommodate different protocols that you have, uh, different requirements that you have. So let's say you want to do, you know, maybe one or two washes, plus or minus. Um, you know, you could definitely um, automate it accordingly. And one other thing I want to mention here is that it has seven inlet solutions. Of course, that includes the washes uh, and also the elution. Uh, but it is something that is uh, clients typically really like. And now I do have a little bit of some test data that I'd like to show you. So you can see uh, uh, on the, in the, the graph that's in gray, you can see that we did a side-by-side -side comparison using the Amagat Say Plus and Magnetic Pro A beads and resin columns. And what you see is basically equivalent, if not better performance with the Amagat Say Plus. On the right-hand side, we also did a 
um, attest to, to, to see how, how high the binding capacity of our magnetic beads are for these particular applications are definitely based on, again, the capacity of the magnetic bead. So you can see on the right hand side is that we did um, uh, a protein A and a, um, a red or sorry, a, a resin that is available in the market, um, again, of course, on protein A. And you can see basically for the MAG, uh, the MAG assay beads, um, they were actually outperforming and in some cases significantly increasing um, um, the capacity, especially when you get to the higher throughput range. I do want to mention that we have quite a bit of different magnetic beads, um, uh, but also we also have quite a bit of resins. So in the scenario that you are currently um, set up with resins and you don't want to switch, but you are looking for something that is good performing and is very cost effective, we do have quite a bit of different resins that could be completely interchangeable uh, with your current setup. We also have quite a bit of different reagents for protein applications. For example, we have an endonuclease, what we call the benz nebulase, um, that reduces the viscosity of your sample, especially if you're working with uh, a bacterial culture lysate, because of course there's typically a lot of viscosity in that sample because of the cell debris as well as the DNA contamination or RNA contamination. Uh, we also have quite a bit of tag cleavage enzymes that, of course, at the end of your protein purification, if you want to clip that tag, this is excellent for you. And lastly, uh, I do want to mention our endotoxin kits. We have endotoxin kits to remove or detect um, the actual uh, levels. So uh, both of these options are readily available. And over here, I actually want to present something that our team is currently working on. This is our next generation or our next platform that our, our team will be uh, launching, hopefully by the end of this year, what we're going to be calling the MMAG SA MIDI. What's great about this is really it's more of an um, uh, addition to the portfolio because it is really meant for high throughput, large scale, uh, higher than the MMAG SA Plus, which is what I just presented. What's different about it is that it also has um, so you can see the buffer stations are at the top, so it's feeding it through the top portion of it. Uh, it is also magnetic bead based. Uh, and what's really nice about it is that it will also include a UV um, a reader that will enable you to detect in real time uh, the concentration of your sample, as well as, of course, the different metrics that you'd be looking for. It also has a shaker incubator, which is, again, a very nice thing to have on a protein purification setup. And with that, I'm going to switch now gears and I'm going to be talking about our protein electrophoresis and Western solutions. Of course, Western blotting is a very, very commonly used technique um, and it has wonderful advantages. There's a reason why it's been commonly used. Of course, it's, it's the gold standard for immune detection and it is definitely an essential step for various applications, of course, bioengineering, proteomics. Uh, and, you know, again, immune detections, different kinds of um, protein applications. Uh, but the challenge with that is that it's actually super labor intensive and it has a lot of sequential steps that are not really um, time efficient. And in a lot of cases, uh, the lack of consistency uh, and the lack of reproducibility leads a lot to a lot of waste. So what our team has developed is a portfolio that is very comprehensive and very complete that it will enable you to automate a lot of these different steps. So the first one I'd like to present is um, specific to um, a basically uh, a protein transfer. So you can see what we did here is that we took the traditional wet transfer and the automated solutions that are available in the market, which unfortunately are all semi-dry or dry, and we combine those two uh, solutions to basically come out with what we call the e-blot instrument. And what's really great about the typical wet transfer, of course, is that it's it's really the gold standard. Um, the protein uh, size isn't limited. Theoretically, um, uh, you know, the, the challenging with challenges with that is typically the fact that it's super slow. It takes hours to overnight. But then when you go into the semi-dry or dry solutions that are available in the market, those are typically a lot faster to run. But of course, um, 
the result consistency is, is, is also good, but of course you're limited to not only the size of the protein, but also the, um, the outcome of the transfer. So with that said, what our system does is actually combine the best of two worlds. So we take the gold standard that is the wet transfer and we automated it. And what's uh, another really great factor is that we have a method to basically um, do the sandwich, which is what you're seeing to the right hand side. Uh, it's a very clean and, and very unique transfer sandwich. You can see it has the sponge, the gel, the membrane in the middle. And then uh, it, you basically uh, close up the cassette and load it into the into the e-block. And it's, of course, it's very quick to use. So this uh, consumable kit, it's all inclusive, basically. So if you're here, I want to mention um, uh, just one additional thing is that the average protein size for the e-blot that it can run is between three kilodaltons to twelve hundred kilodaltons, which is uh, again very, um, very good. And um, you can see on the left-hand side we compared it side by side using the traditional manual wet transfer, the semi-dry um, uh, systems that are available in the market by competitors, as well as uh, uh, basically two of them. And side by side we were able to see that theoretically uh, for the uh, manual, or not theoretically, in reality for uh, really the lower end as well as the higher end, we were able to really transfer both sides. You can see for the semi-dry solutions, um, the performance was not really feasible for the um, basically the lower range. We also have a Western blotting workflow that is completely automated using the Easy West Lite. What's really nice about the Easy West Light is that um, it, it basically does the blocking, the incubation, as well as the um, incubation with the secondary and, uh, sorry, the primary and the secondary antibodies and all of the washes in between. So I think that most people that have done any kind of Western or a staining or transfer would agree that this is probably the most tedious, most labor intensive step. Uh, steps in the process because of all the washes and all the additional steps that you have to do in between. So this is completely automated and it can do actually two, two membranes at a time. So these are some of the main features. Um, you can see that it has the uh, easy to use interface, it has the cassette. Uh, what's really great about this cassette, it can actually be removed and placed from the device and it can be placed in the refrigerator to incubate uh, overnight at four degrees. Uh, and the, basically um, what you're seeing uh, with the blue and the green and then the white tube, those are um, the, basically the incubation and the washes as well as your antibodies and those are actually recoverable. So you could, uh, you, there's not waste uh, at the end of it. The last thing I wanna mention here is that we also do have quite a bit of solutions that will make sure that you have good results, good success. And we had, have released last year, actually, our Easy West Till Ewing Kit. And I have some data to share in the next slide for that one. So you can see what we did here. We did a side-by-side -side comparison using a couple, three different samples. Uh, and um, what, you, what we had compared it to was the 5% dry milk. And what you can see is that we got really good consistent results, I would say better results than the dry milk. And one thing I want to highlight at the bottom of that um, table at the um, uh, closer to the bottom row is that the timeline was basically less than half for the easy diluent kit. Basically, the dry milk was about three and a half hours. The diluent kit was about one and a half hours, which is significantly improved. And for this particular um, uh, uh, workflow, the last device I have to show you is the e-stain. This is really the only uh, staining solution available in the market. What's really wonderful about it is that it really takes a very, very messy process and it automates it completely for you. So similar to the other two systems, it can do two gels or two membranes at a time. For gels, it is compatible with Kumasi Blue, so it is a complete replacement for any kind of workflow that's using Kumasi Blue stain. And it takes approximately 10 minutes to stain. Of course, there's different protocols that you can run depending on your application. 
Uh, and then if you're doing any kind of um, a membrane staining, it is also compatible with the Ponsu S solution, which is, uh, which is what you can see on the bottom right corner. So uh, with that said, you can see that also that the sensitivity of the, um, of the solution is pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, the example on the top right corner is with, uh, that shows as low as 12.5 nanograms for the sensitivity using the Kumasi blue stain. So with that said, um, just a quick reminder for a traditional uh, um, Western blotting workflow, taking you from electrophoresis into your basically transfer all the way to the incubation and washes. It typically takes two to three days. However, the Genscript solutions, basically all the steps that are you're typically struggling with and trying to uh, obviously do uh, manually, it takes it from two days to only two hours or less. So it really reduces all the additional steps that are needed. Uh, offline as well as completely um, uh, streamline and completely reduce the timeline needed for this application. So with that said, I do want to highlight here that um, that even though uh, in a lot of cases when you automate, you have to sacrifice something. And um, we, I want to mention here that the quality is really consistent with the industry standard. So I hope you see that from the data, this these products are really um, outperforming, um, uh, you know, the industry standard, if not equivalent to it. So again, I want to summarize that we have a complete protein uh, uh, workflow all the way from purification to the actual electrophoresis in Western. And with that said, uh, for the final section of this presentation, I have the cell isolation solution that I'll be presenting you on. I think that you guys got the gist that we have a lot of solutions that are magnetic bead based. So uh, for this particular solution, it's really interested in the sense that we took multiple facilities in, in Genscript. We obviously have multiple uh, sister companies now, uh, and we took the strength of each one and we leveraged them to make the Genscript platform for the cell isolation. So you can see here that we took the bead development and we took our antibody development and we conjugated them to basically um, develop um, what we uh, are now using on the cell therapy solution. So for the antibody development, we actually have our sister company, Transcript ProBio. It's a CMC platform that has excellent uh, antibody capability. It's really, G it's really one of the most commonly known uh, CMC platforms. It's really, um, it's really um, high quality. And as I mentioned before, of course, we have uh, on the Genscript side, on the products division, uh, which is where this is living, um, we've really developed uh, many, many years of expertise, and there's quite a bit of different scientists. I think the last time um, I got the number, it was more than 40 scientists that are just for the beads development, chemists, biologists, um, you know, a clinical, uh, different levels of clinical expertise all that are focused on our GMP development, I'm sorry, on our B development capabilities. So we really um, took that. And then finally, what we ended up doing for our validation of our cell therapy solutions is that we partnered with our uh, third sister company, Legend Biotech, which is of course uh, really well known for their CAR-T um, collaboration as well with Janssen. So uh, they've seen a lot of success with that. And so to the right hand side, I do want to mention that this is a quick overview of the structure of the magnetic beads. You can see that um, basically uh, the actual uh, bead is fairly small. It's about uh, 100 nanometers. The matrix of the bead is non-toxic, so it is biodegradable. So that means you do not need to remove it at the end of the purification. So the cell will actually get rid of it on its own. And one huge pain point with cell therapy solutions is that the fact that um, there's not much uh, solutions out there. So in a lot of cases, not only are you, are you challenged with really long lead times uh, because you're working with one or two vendors, which is really, that's the only solutions out there. Uh, you're also really challenged with the quantity that you have to buy. So with ours, we've really tried to listen to the customer, see what you guys need, and then develop uh, according to that. And if there's something that you don't see, 
please let us know. We're willing to work on making something custom for you or potentially uh, providing another off-the-shelf solution. So with that said, I do want to show you uh, the typical uh, solutions that we have for both automated or manual isolation. So of course, starting material, whether it's PMC, PBMC or Lucupac or a single cell suspension, we will take, go ahead and do either the positive cell selection or a negative cell selection. And again, it is based on our uh, magnetic bead technology that are conjugated with the antibodies that are specific to the application you're working with, whether it's a CD4, a CD8, or maybe uh, something else. We're constantly expanding the different selections. Uh, we are also very much uh, working on um, uh, our um, custom platform that will enable us to make something specific to any client. So with that said, you can do uh, either the manual rack, which is what you're seeing on the top right corner with our magnetic uh, rack, our cytosynced magnetic rack, or we have an automated solution, what you're seeing on the bottom right hand corner, which is what we call the cytosynced 1000. And this is a completely automated instrument that will enable you to automate basically one leukopack. So I do want to take a couple moments to basically highlight the features of our automated solution. Um, it's a it's really um, you know similar to the other results that I've shown before. Our team really focused on ensuring that it has industry performance, so high efficiency, high viability of the cells that are that are coming out of the um, out of the uh, automated uh, solution at the end um, that can be successful really in a clinical setting. And another thing I want to mention here is that this is completely closed system. So one of the first steps is to um, really seal the tubing as well as the sample um, uh, bag that you are connecting before you go ahead and load it onto um, the platform. And one additional thing um, that is really a key feature to a lot of the clinical applications, of course, is the data integrity. So we are offering now, this is brand new, actually, it was just released. We are now offering an audit trail using 21 CF part 11, which means um, it's, it's completely, um, um, it, it completely maintains the data integrity. We also have the ability to export the data, whether on uh, using a USB port or potentially like a local network, depending on whatever the laboratory is interested in. And then the last thing I want to mention here is that you can also customize your own software, which is a huge thing for a lot of clients that are currently stuck with solutions that are kind of boxed. Uh, you can certainly use the pre-programmed protocols like the other uh, solutions that I mentioned. However, you can certainly build your own if you choose. Now I want to show you really quickly some competitive data. So you can see on the um, uh, basically what is in blue is the competitor. What is in light green is the Cytosync 1000. And then the gray bars are basically a ferrous. And what you're seeing here is the purity of, the C of I cell isolated uh, CD4, uh, sorry, CD4, uh, four, um, 45. And you can see the T cells, the CD4T, and then CD, um, CD8, as well as the other uh, natural killer cells. Um, and you can see it's a side-by-side -side comparison. And you can see that either the cytosynced uh, was equivalent or even exceeded the performance of the competition. And then in the middle graph, what you're seeing is really the recovery percent. And again, it was a side-by-side -side comparison next to the comp competitor or the readily available market solution. And again, the, the GenScript solution basically uh, was is in the light green, and it was uh, actually shown to be uh, outperforming the competition. And then the last uh, graph on the right hand side is to show the viability of the cells that were recovered. And you can see, again, uh, side by side compared to the competitor as well as the Aferis, uh, which is, of course, the positive control. So basically, you can see that this cell viability was not impacted. So with that said, I do want to summarize uh, the solutions that we have. We have quite a bit of different T-cell isolation uh, reagents, again, CD4, CD8, CD3. We do have the natural killer cells, the stem cells, as well as the universal isolation, which is just a um, nanobead. Uh, again, we have all the consumables and, of course, the manual and automated instrumentations if you choose, if you have a preference for either one. And with that said, I hope that this webinar 
kind of shows you the different solutions, um, how GenScript basically took different applications. We looked at the tools in the market, we looked at the common issues, and we tried to provide you with basically the optimal solution all the way to the right hand side. So basically, this is a summary slide of all the different not only solutions, but also the pain points uh, and as well as the JavaScript uh, really uh, optimized solutions that are available to you. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Really appreciate you taking the time and I'm happy to take any questions. <clears throat> thank you, Ruba, for your informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We can go ahead and get started. Our first question for you, Rupa, is what is the limitation of the sample for the plasmid purification solution? The limitation is going to be by the bacterial pellet weight, which means that you need to make sure that you are weighing your bacterial pellet before you actually load it onto the system. And the limitation is going to be between 0 0.3 to 1.5 grams. Great. Next question. Can I use my own consumables for the plasmid purification solution? Unfortunately, that is not something that is feasible. Uh, the reason why is because the consumables are configured to the instrument. So to make sure that we have really good results, the consumables were designed as, a, as part of the solution. Awesome. And can a demo be provided for these automated solutions? Absolutely. So we do have a demo program. Um, we do have a significant amount of demand. So it is something that we would have to figure out and work through uh, depending on the urgency. Um, but it is something that we can certainly accommodate. Great. So it looks like that's all the questions we got for today. Um, thank you so much, Ruba, for your presentation. Do you have any final comments for your audience? No, that's it. Thank you all very much. And of course, you're welcome to reach out to me directly or through uh, the LabRoots platform. I'm happy to answer any potential questions that come up later on as well. Great. Thank you again, Reba, for your time today and your important research. Um, before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Gen GenScript, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions we do not have time for or if any other questions come up um, during the on-demand period, they will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provide at the time of registration. This webcast will be viewed on demand for two years until March 22nd of 2025. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We do encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you so much.